Let's see. 40 more minutes of booming. Here we come. Oh, don't worry. We'll still finish in time for... Yeah, I'm Empire pretty sure. Wars. I'm pretty yeah, sure we will. Uh, this is a very, very circular-shaped pond, by the way. Yeah, indeed. It looks very symmetrical. Feels good, man. ACCM is playing red Aztecs. We have uh, Bad Boy in blue as Italians. So, are we gonna get an FC here as well? From the famous Aztec Navy? Or it's not going to be a thing and we're just gonna see something like FC Monk and Siege Push from ACCM against Barneys. Barneys is playing Japanese in teal and you have a Clement as Mongols in yellow. Um, interesting pick with Aztecs and Mongols. Um, Mongols at least have the, the you know, quick feudal age, go for, you know, good naval option and then use that to help boost your economy in the mid game when you really need it as Mongols to get you to late game. So that at least makes sense to me. Aztecs really don't. Um, maybe like fast imp. Aztec condos. Yeah, honestly, condos could be a decent idea here with the Italians available. And uh, being okay. totally honest, I could see not even fast imp. But what, what if you do fast fast castle monks and siege? Because Barney is Japanese, so you could see the Aztec player beating the Japanese here on land because the Japanese player is likely to play on water. I'm not sure. How much Clement is going to play on water? He could go for like fast feudal and fire galleys, or he could do FC and work towards Mangadai. That's just a decision from him, basically. Yeah, also oh. a little bit of a lame. Lame! A lame I guess on. That's allowed in this tournament. Lame on Arena! Oh, yeah, you, you used to see it all the time um, back when uh, deer spawned outside of the walls, which it does in this pond arena map gen. So that's going to be pretty sick for Mongols. Yeah, indeed, this is perfect for Clement. Basically what happened is that Bad Boy opened up his walls to push in the deer, but it turns out that Clement just runs in and takes one boar, and it's the Mongols player receiving the boar, which is a huge boost right now for Clement. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really, really sick. Also, we have our uh, Cyan player Barneys going on water already. Also, I just learned uh, from my Twitch chat that CL is not only back, but he signed up for KOTD3. Um, happy, happy, the Chinese player. And, um, okay, so I think we have our new favorite for KOTD3. I don't think anyone's going to stand a chance against him. <laughs> well, I see. mean, what are you going to do against the guy who can just go full walls on Serengeti and then castle drop you with four villagers? <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, if he can vote this map, I'm just gonna, you know, tip my hat in front of him. As Clement he almost, almost beat Leary in KOTD1. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I, I know that was a long time ago, but he had some famous instances where he just, like, walled half the map. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to be interesting to take a look at. It's funny that uh, one of the general mindset of Chinese players is that they want to tower everything and play super aggro and aggressive. Often with forwards, like Stray Dog does, for example. And then on other days, they're just like, okay, let's fully stonewall and just camp and turtle forward. Uh, it, yeah, it's the difference between Tim A.exe and Tim B.exe. Uh, it's, it's pretty much just the two ways that Tim plays. And I guess, you know, over in China, they, they have their own uh, metagame that is kind of likely based off of just how Tim used to play back in the day, honestly. And then just like everyone just kind of adapting from that. And it just kind of trickles all the way down. All right, so Clement clicking up at 21 pop over here. That's pretty fast, but he only has two fishing ships to play around with right now. And soon he will be followed by Bad Boy. Honestly, Clement's feudal age time wasn't as impressive as you thought it would be with all the hunt that he had. Um, he's even off of the boar. Poor boar corpse is just rotting. Yeah, I don't think he actually maximized the efficiency of that lame. Um, to be honest, as it appears that bad boy is gonna go for the fire galleys and ACCM 
Seems like he's also going for fire galleys. We are going to see the famous Aztec Navy taking the fight over here. We saw it work in OBNC. Aztecs winning water in post-imperial age. Anything's possible, man. Um, but uh, in, in all seriousness, Aztecs are totally fine on water in the uh, early game. Uh, you do The faster creation speed does apply to warships. I'm like 93% sure. So that's going to be pretty nice. You know, it's like a do-it-yourself Persian bo uh, bonus. Yeah, indeed. So, plus you also start with a little bit of extra gold, which helps out a tiny bit at the beginning. So, a pair of the ACM even went for Loom. Just wants to make sure that Vosher is safe, but that isn't really going, going to impact his gold eco because he starts with some extra. Uh, also, nice move here for uh, Clement. I think he's going to even be able to nab the scout of Bad Boy. Indeed, Bad Boy, unfortunately, stopping and allowing his scout to die. So he got the lame off and then killed his opponent's scout. That's just uh, feels good, man. Yeah, so far Clement has been doing a pretty good job against Bad Boy. Bad Boy will be on two dogs, just like ACCM, versus four dogs combined from the two opponents. So it should be pretty much even, but as you said, Aztec production bonus can actually help out the tiny bit. And ACCM is opening galleys here. It's interesting. We saw... We, we see this from time to time with, with certain players who in, in team games... We'll just open galleys, even if it's like a, a very confined, you know, water space. Uh, so yeah, faster production could mean better galley mass, or faster galley mass, rather. Um, and of course, it, it would be an excellent accompaniment to the fire ships as Italians, because I do think Italians benefit a lot from going for fire ships. Yeah, totally. And Bad Boy is capable of delaying um, the opponents long enough for those galleys to kick in here. And indeed, HTM is just piling up all those galleys and with free we'll dogs losing the fire or fishing sh ship rather uh, i think it's fine in the short term you lose a few fish but if you can actually win the water back with like let's say 10 galleys you are just going to take down the opponent's fish anyways and you can rebuild your own so i don't think it's a massive issue as long as you're able to push your opponent away from water in a reasonable time yeah, we, like that's something that we've seen consistently throughout the series from ACCM and Bad Boy. They're willing to take short-term losses on water to win it back in Castle Age. But right now, the fire galley numbers seem to be getting very, very high very quickly for the Frenchies. And honestly, they're looking far, far better in this game than they have so far in the series. Yeah, um, might be worth pointing out that ACCM is only at 24 eco, which is even surprising considering that he lost his fishing eco. I don't think... Like, if you look at... Uh, Bad Boy. Bad Boy has three fishing ships and 31 eco. ACM is 24. Uh, yeah, because all of his food was in fishing ships. Or his food income was in fishing ships, so then he had to build a mill, start collecting food there, oh, and then man. it just wasn't great. Oh man, that's actually um, pretty bad. Big demo hit, though, in favor of uh, Bad Boy. Yeah, indeed, and uh, now you have a big blob of galleys, so you can finally start counterattacking and just absolutely shatter the fleet of the Frenchies. Uh, the French is now at six docks combined. Same for uh, our Vietnamese team. Ooh, bad boy with another good demo ship hit. His demo ships have been uh, on point. Uh, yeah. But yeah, now ACCM, his eco is potato, but he does have 11 military right now, which is just more than the Frenchies put together. So this could be an issue. Yeah, indeed. And uh, in this moment... The Frenchies might actually lose their fishing eco. Galley switch coming in here from Barney as well, surprisingly. Uh, I mean, that's fine. Um, I mean, you want somebody to switch into galleys. Uh, just because it's you get the more well-rounded army comp with uh, fire ships and galleys between two different players. Demo ship could try going for some fishing ships, but uh, no, they are Japanese fishing ships. Bad boy uh, smartly realizing that. And nice split there from Barney's. Yeah, absolutely pretty nice. And it appears that everybody is just fighting for the water in the middle. Now, behind this one, Bad Boy has a pretty sick eco of 15 on food. And Bad Boy is the only player right now who has an absolutely untouched fishing eco so far. Uh, he lost one fishing ship in early feudal age. But other than that, yeah, uh, he still has three fishing ships working comfortably. Feels good, man. And ooh, this is a water fight that is not going to be going in favor of our Cyan player, I think. Yeah, indeed. 10 versus 8, yeah. Demo is a nice connection. 
over there. A lot of these galleys are really low, so it's actually I think better to not focus fire as much as like as weird as it feels, but I think you want to spread the damage out a little bit just because galleys have kind of a slow fire rate. But it's it's not gonna matter. Beautiful, beautiful fight there for the Vietnamese team, catching right back up in the score department. Yeah, indeed. And with that one, as I said, Bad Boy still has a fishing eco working for him, and he's going up to Castle Age. If you take a look at the resources for Clement, he's not super far, but he needs some more time. Same here for Barney's, and uh, ACM is by far the furthest away from getting up to Castle. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but of course, once Italians hit Castle Age, then the problems are really going to uh, kick up, as you can get uh, War Galley half cost, you can get Careening half cost, so the enemy galleys are like literally dealing one or two damage or something like that. And yeah, then you're just going to lose water 100% of the time. And indeed, French have lost their entire fishing eco. And that could be a nice demo from Bad Boy as well. Just great demo hits from him in general. Yeah, he is 9 to 7 KD, which isn't super impressive, but he damaged a lot of ships. And uh, this just allowed ACCM to finish them off. Yeah. ACCM still has a horrible eco, but it doesn't really matter too much, to be honest. And now he can add in a bunch of fishing ships. Uh, I do like how from Barney's going to be trying to catch any fishing ships that ACCM was making, or maybe a stray galley. Uh, but nope, ACCM, too clever, going to be hiding his uh, additional galleys in the docks for the time being. Yeah, indeed. And now when the blob arrives, he's just going to unpop them and again destroy Barney's fleet here. Everybody else is going up to Castlage with the exception of ACM. ACM is very, very far from that, to be honest. So he might stick around in Feudal for some more time. Is Bad Boy going fast imp? No. Okay. His resources were actually looking fairly close to fast imp resources, but no, he just got a bunch of eco upgrades and stuff like that. Oh yeah, Bad Boy indeed. Now, he could actually consider that, to be honest, because he's not really going to dump food into anything unless he makes additional TCs, and I could really see a fast imp here coming up for him. Uh, the question then just becomes fast imp into what? Well, because he doesn't have any infrastructure for anything. Technically, he can go barracks and condos, add a few bombard cannons, and you should be fine with that. Uh, I guess with the fishing eco, it might be enough. Like, you just have the food income. Yeah, like, he's going to be just constantly popping out fishing ships and basically just stay 1 TC. So he doesn't really have to dump off a lot of food into villagers. Yet, what we are going to see is a massive fish boom. So he's still going to have the eco behind this one. But he can actually have a pretty nice imp time. Because he's Don't not really losing the food. TC. <laughs> Why go fast imp when you can boom? Oh yeah, or you can just outboom your opponent, um, especially considering that he's dropping outposts in the north, so he's going to see everything that his opponents are planning to do against him, which means that uh, he knows if there is any aggression coming his way, and if there is no aggression, he can just boom and chill, and in the meanwhile, it appears that Clement's fleet is going to get absolutely annihilated over here by the fire ships. He's trying to save them until he can get War Galley, but doesn't even have it queued up. So, yeah, I think he knows that. It, it's not a viable option to fight for water at this point. Yeah, definitely not. And if you just look at the Ecos, Bad Boy again is at 52. And uh, it appears that Bad Boy even queued up a bunch of demos, which will be pretty much worthless now because the Frenchies are completely off from water. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of a bloopsie. But that's fine. His fishing eco is still absolutely insane. Cheaper Italian fishing ships are great. Is adding in a third town center as well. He just wants to get a huge eco up and running. Yeah, and Barn is actually playing with four TCs. So, well, it's the time for boom again. And gonna give credit to ACCM for having a 40 to 13 KD. That's actually pretty sick. Oh, yeah. That's, uh,. Definitely very impressive. He's still very far behind economically, but he's adding in two town centers and uh, can also add in fishing ships. Uh, yeah, just a little bit lacking in food, but he is starting to mix them back in. And that's definitely going to help uh, facilitate his eco coming back online. 
Yeah, at this point, bad boy is even off from gold. He's like, okay, just wood and food, make fishing ships, make farms, and just boom as hard as it is possible. Another TC coming in here for bad boy, even on the front. Seven on stone, so this is probably going to be like a Jembo bombard cannon type of a push in Imperial. And Jembos should get a bonus against Mangodai, right? Yep, yep, yep. Italians can struggle against Siege Ram, uh, but you do have Bombard Cannon to help you out. And generally speaking, Jenbo plus Hussar beats Mangudai plus Hussar, I think. Yeah, um, probably. But it's not something I've seen play out too, too often. I think the concern here is that Clement is going to have a way weaker eco than Bad Boy. Right now it's 10 Voyagers difference, and as I said, Bad Boy already has quite a lot of fish working for him. He has four TCs and potentially a few more docks to add fishing ships with, so... I think that, yeah, Italians can struggle against Siege Ram, but are we even going to see Clement getting to Siege Ram? Uh, no, because he has no eco bonus at this point, and that's not great. And he's going to be way slower to imp. I think that you don't even need to open Genbos. I think you just can open Arbalusts and get some Trebs out and then just steamroll Mongols without too much issue. Yeah, I totally agree. And meanwhile, we have ACM picking up the relics. Again, not something super important, but with Aztecs, it's always nice to have the relics. And he's going for a forward siege workshop. So we might see some aggression. And yet again, Barney is is not even close to being able to defend himself. Like, he's mining stones, so he could go for guard towers or a defensive castle in the long run. But right now, he is just booming as well at 78 villagers. Yeah, I mean, ACCM is definitely the one who's furthest behind an eco still. So, it could be maybe a little bit of an issue, but I think Bad Boy is so far ahead that it more than makes up for it. And then, something I really like, uh, just something small, but uh, the Vietnamese guys have always done a really good job of spreading out their uh, their warships once they win water, so that there's no potential for a redock attempt from their opponents. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the ACCM's line of sight. They see the entire coastline. Wow, actually, there, I don't think there is a single tile of coastline that is unseen right now. No, absolutely not. That's sick. They even have oh, demos no, patrolling one, in the middle, no, there's which... one tile of coastline. <laughs> yeah. If you just take a look at the overall map vision that they have, they need... They see everything that they need to see, basically. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, range is now coming in here for bad boys, so indeed will just be for the Arbalest play. Uh, he's around 25% of the way up. And should be looking pretty good as far as just ending his opponent pretty quickly there. Clement is also going to Imperial, has 11 Voyagers on stone ready to drop a castle, but he's gonna get a castle dropped in his face first, and uh, honestly, Bad Boy could just bombard uh, that DC down in that little pocket on the gold from the outside in the long run. I wonder if that castle counts as being on a hill, because if it's not on a hill, that seems like a pretty big fail, because it could very easily be on a hill. Uh, I'm not sure. He's another town center, but I'm not sure if that's going to help. Yeah, that's not going to help at all. And uh, It looks like Barney's is going for Swordsman, which is going to be fantastic if you're going up against Eagle Warriors, but ACCM actually hasn't shown any Eagle Warrior production yet. Yeah, I think he suspects Kondos. Mm, Kondos, yeah, I guess the, the Swordsman will do fine against them, especially with Japanese. Anyways, ACCM is the final player clicking up into Imperial. He's gonna have a bit of a mangonel aggression over here, but Guard Towers is there for Barneys. So, he's going to be able to defend against this one, and indeed with Supplies and Long Swords, he's going to commit to the infantry push. Yep, should be fine there. Um, of course, you can then switch into Jaguar Warriors if you're ACCM. Yeah, but... Gonna counter those swordsmen. But guess what? One of the best ways to counter Jag Warriors is with Samurai. No. Yes. They're, they kill each other. Actually, Jaguars win. Uh, I don't think so. No, I, I'm, I'm like pretty sure they do. They got well, plus one bonus damage, I believe, in DE, and they have more melee armor and more bonus damage overall. Yeah, but G Japanese Samurai deal so much damage to Jaguars. The Jag now I'm going to have to go into the editor after this. Like, Jaguar Warriors are unique units, so Samurai deal a lot of damage to them. 
Well, yeah, but samurai are infantry, so jaguars deal a bonus damage to them. Yeah, true, but still, Depends you have. Who hit first as Trirem? Yeah, like this is Trirem's place to shine. Well, regardless. Yeah, samurai do have the faster attack speed, but the jaguars have one more armor. Uh, and the samurai also have, I think, five more HP. Um, well, some monks coming in, and in low note, oh, beautiful Manganel hits from ACCM. Really nice attack round from him, getting some conversions as well. Monks are going to be great against swordsmen in low numbers. Like, yeah, the units aren't individually all that important, but still, the slow move speed means that you can get the... Uh, the hits off, or uh, the conversions off. Yeah, indeed. Now, the thing is that Clement does have his castles over here, and uh, since he's producing traps, he can actually produce Mangadai right now, so he kind of has to make a decision, whereas his opponent is able to produce Bombard Cannons traps as well. Bombard Cannons will need to kill the traps, though, because Bad Boy is losing the fight on the north. Yeah, he is. Um... But the Bombard Cannons should be able to turn the tide without too, too much issue. Honestly, it's pretty impressive that Clement's been able to get these two castles up. With the power of masonry, he's been able to hang on. Uh, and even getting the, the trebuchet snipe is pretty sick. The castle will go down because that is way too many trebuchets to repair. And yeah, that's pretty great. The only problem right now is that there really isn't any... Uh, there, there's no meat to the army of Clement. He doesn't have the Mangudai numbers because he can't make Mangudai and Trebs at the same time. Yeah, and also he's going to lose this castle on the right side, I believe. I don't think he can actually hold this one off. That's two traps, two bombard cannons. He still has a thousand gold in, or stone in the bank, so he can definitely repair basically endlessly, but I think that's way too much to deal with. That's five bombard cannons now to deal with. Yep, and the castle will go down. And obviously with Mongols, that is just even worse because it means you can't make Mangudai, whereas... Yeah, Genbos are great and all, but Arbalest pretty much will do the same job in this scenario. Ooh, don't want to lose Bombard Cannons for free, though, and that is going to be two dead Bombard Cannons for free. That is not ideal. Yeah, make it free because the traps are also make taking down four. some. Five. Oh my god, that's awful. Oh, bad boy. Might have cast or cursed at him a little bit. Yeah, in the meanwhile, on the right side, we were going to have champions and also Yasama Towers coming in here for Barney, who is redocking the middle. Uh, interesting. He does have all these towers ar around so, to help fend off against the galleys. Interesting. Um, and it looks like ACCM is actually going for some Jaguars. Love it. Um, but also some Atlatl Skirmishers, thinking his opponent would be going for Arbalests. But even against the Swordsman until plus four defense comes in, uh, which I guess will be right now, but up until that point, they're going to be just fine. Yep, for now, uh, Clement is waiting for Siege Ram, and there is Drill coming in here. The Mongols' dead blob might actually start moving pretty soon over here in this one. And I feel like it's ACCM's turn to do something, because apparently Bad Boy isn't able to penetrate the defenses of Clement. Uh, getting the treb snipe is nice. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot of rams, though. It is not a quaint army of rams, as fast off would say. Uh, but there are some barracks here. But we're gonna need to see some uh, some condos. We're gonna need to see some nice uh, shoreside condo developments uh, right by this pond. Indeed. And uh, well, that castle could actually go down for Clement if he's not sending in the villagers to repair because that's still three bombard cannons shelling. It's soon to be four and five. Bad boys micro here is okay, and losing those castles hurts so much for a Mongols player. But here comes the dead blob of onagers and rams. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, choo choo. <laughs> Look at them Deleting juking the, the cannonballs. Deleting the walls, man. This is the moment. Uh, Onager's getting a couple Bombard Cannons. That's what you want to see. Yeah, but what happens if uh, Bad Boy starts adding condos like he's doing right now? Well, that's definitely also what we wanted to see. Um, condos, of course, going to be coming in. It doesn't really matter that they aren't, like, the greatest units in the world against Onagers. They're fast. They have, you know, decent attack, decent HP. And they'll be able to do the job. 
uh, in terms of cleaning up the army that is almost entirely siege. But imagine if there were like a fair amount of Mangudai behind this, then the Condos would get shredded, but there just aren't because he hasn't had the castle time to make Mangudai, which are a very slow to train unit. And it looks like uh, just arbs and skirms are uh, going to be needling down Barneys. Yeah, they have the like... score lead though. Um, they actually have a score lead, but I think it's like a quad before the storm. So there's a bunch of champions here for Barneys, but are they really leading? They're taking the water back, and uh, honestly, Bad Boy lost quite a lot of fishing eco if you take a look at that, which is going to be pretty significant. In fact. Bad Boy's fishing eco is kind of in ruins right now because he was relying on the fish so hard. Uh, yeah, he is. So he's needing to get up a farm eco at home, of which he does not have many at this point, which means he can't really make all that many condos, which obviously is not ideal. And the fact that this tiny little hill exists oh, for that's... Clement. Oh, that's yeah, two but... bombard cannons lost. Yeah, that hurts so thing. much. But honestly, I feel like the only reason Clement's in this game is because he has this tiny little hill. Like, even just the one tile hill just can make all the difference in the world. And yeah, that's going to be, I think, pretty tricky to deal with. But we do see ACCM moving inexorably forward here. And I don't really see this army of champions being sufficient. Yeah, in the meanwhile, there is Monks supporting as well with 80 HP. And we are going to have Monks on the north as well. I think ACCM wants to convert some of those onagers from a distance on the north. Uh, yeah, probably. Also, we have uh, markets being established, at least for Bad Boy. There's, I guess, one for ACCM, but I saw Silk Road coming in. Yeah, I need to cat to Peruto on the way for Barney's, though. He wants to win this Trev War, man. Yeah, he definitely wants to, but how is he going to stop the Siege Rams? Uh, champions, I guess, but, uh, gotta get a move on. That's quite a lot of champs, though, and there isn't really enough Arblasts to deal with them. Yeah, this is primarily skirmishers. Oh, uh, yeah, that's gonna work just fine. Missing blast first, but otherwise fully upgraded champions. I don't know why he's making so many skirmishers, uh, ACCM. Yeah, this is weird. ACCM does have some gold income. And there is a lot of neutral gold mines that are completely untouched, so I'm not sure why he's going full skirms. In the north, uh, Clement lost a castle. So yeah, that hurts. A bit and as I said, his DC here on the gold mine could also be exposed. There's still quite a lot of bombard cannons to deal with, or blast to deal with the Mangadai. And there is some condos now running around as well. Oh, uh, Mangadai trying to get some work done. Can kill the bombard cannons with ease. Yeah, but there is no army now for bad boy. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I guess he just lost everybody. Uh, Mangudai are very close to uh, Elite. And in come the Kondos. They have five Pierce armor. But obviously Mangudai are, uh, well, they're, they're faster. Duh. And that could be a little bit of an issue. Some trebuchets getting picked off for absolutely free. Not a fan of that. Yeah, definitely not. And in the meanwhile, on the south, this is a bit still of a stalemate, but there is more arbs now for ACCM, and there's absolutely nothing that Barneys has against the Arblasts, though. Um... Not really, no. Just... Monks! Monks are the answer! <laughs> no, uh, not a good answer. Yeah, not at all. Although, that's a lot of Karapuruto traps, and I mean... Micro against that is pretty hard. Those rocks hit quite hard over there. Um, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Look at that's that. That's a lot of traps. That's a lot of traps, and they even have Kataparuto, so really just juking all those stones and rocks is just insanely hard. On the north, we have the blob of sea gems coming in, and more and more Mangadai for uh, Clement over here. Oh, man. If the Frenchies can come back in this game, that would just be absolutely sick. Yeah, uh, and... Our numbers are really low, and the Trebs are doing work. Yeah, but the, the champion numbers are also relatively low in this one, so it's going to be like a Puric victory, or defeat, from whichever side you're looking at it. The concern, I believe, for the French is that they are not even close to establishing trade. So, right in this very moment, Clement is going to run out of gold. Well, actually has... A little bit more gold to work with, like a thousand or so. 
But after that, there is nothing that he can do, and he's just gonna get smashed by potentially Jembos. Uh... Could. Are, are Jembos on the way? I don't know, but if he's going for Osar, Jembos should be on the way. I don't see any Jembos on the way. But yeah, w once the Hussar numbers increase, then a bad boy is probably going to know that their opponents are running out of gold, so there's a need for a few Jembos. On the right side, this is still a bit of a stalemate. Look at that horde! Is that 10 trebs? It's actually 11. But That's more than that, yeah. Oh. That's 13 that's trebs 13. now. Yeah, 14. Well, Barnes is going for the trebs. masterpiece. Imagine 14 traps with Warwolf, though. I mean, they're crazy with Karaparuto, but 14 with Warwolf. I've had five traps with Warwolf before, and that completely wrecked my opponent in a Britain mirror once. That was that was pretty glorious. But uh, the, those numbers of traps right there are absolutely silly. Uh, almost full upgrades on the Mangadai at this point, and we're getting towards that Mongol Death Ball. Uh, are we? I mean, Clement doesn't really have a lot of gold to work with, and they're not even close to setting up trade. No, well, they're making the markets now, but the, with ACCM in control of this corner in the south, uh, that could be a very big issue. And now we see the champs just not being able to be replenished. Yeah, the Treb Mass is still alive, but it's you see all the skirmishers having to come in. Once the skirmisher fight begins, that's when the Atlatl terms of Aztecs are really going to shine. Treb's still getting some kills, though. <laughs> look, look, at the, look at those rocks just flying on top of the skirms. But yeah, if you can just control this corner... And, you know, slowly take down the traps and just be annoying over here with a the Conatieri, then replenishing the champs is not really going to be a possibility. Yeah, also, uh, Bad Boys have been doing a really good job, especially with trade. He got Silk Road a while ago, and the trade is just uh, looking really, really strong for him. He's retaken water. I saw him get shipped right a little while ago. He's getting Elite Genbo. Um, so, yeah, he might be losing a few units right here, but he still has some space to fall back to. And that should give him the time he needs to amass an army. So long as he doesn't send them to their death, like, right now. Like, stop doing that. Yeah, basically, ACM is gonna go for, uh, what is going to be Garland Wars. Garland Wars condos with Atlatl Skirms here. Considering that the opponent doesn't really have a lot of gold for champions, I mean, this can do the job. Yeah, this should be enough. There are some Yasuma Towers here with full upgrades. So that could be a little bit of an issue. Only four Pierce Armor in total on these condos. But... No, not the deer! What did that deer ever do to you, man? Um... I actually don't think ACCM can push this just yet. And look at the north! That's a big uh, dead blob. But the problem is that the Jambos will be extremely cost-efficient against everything that Clement has right now. And Clement is still not close to having any kind of gold income, basically. He has four on gold. And, uh... uh everyone needs to keep these castles alive, though. I don't know. Start rotation on the Genbos, though. Making them as far away from the Rams as possible and trying to focus down Mangadai. But there just aren't enough of them. Yeah, there isn't enough. And I think the Genbos aren't really fully upgraded. They actually are. No, they, they are. Um, Seed germs are all down, but there's still Trebs coming in, and... Uh-oh. Swords are now here from ACCM, but that's not going to be that great. And the, the military numbers are just way too low for the Vietnamese players right now. Yeah, but there is no gold on uh, the French's side right now. Like there's Oh, they have to win right now. <laughs> yeah, this is a now or never for the Frenchies. If the Vietnamese players just hold on for like three or four more minutes, I think that's pretty much over. But look at that blob on the south. I mean, that is like... 16 Kalaparuto Trebs. Yeah, I don't think the uh, the gingerbread castles of Aztecs are going to be able to withstand that. <laughs> yeah, I think nothing withstands that, but they are somewhat exposed, and a few of them could actually get picked off. And here we go. Garland Wars champions versus Japanese champs. Oh, the Japanese champs should win that fight, by the way. Yeah, but the question is, can you actually replenish those? There is six on gold right now for Barneys, for Clement. You have only three on gold. The push on the north is still strong. But I mean, it's still far from... Actually, it's not far from inflicting a lot of damage. They're close to the trade. 
yeah, um, Bad Boy's actually way overboomed at this point. Okay, I think he's deleting villagers or something, because he was at like 160 villagers uh, due to having all those trade carts. So yeah, you got to be really careful right there. Uh, more ranges coming in, just trying to supplement the genbos with just arbalests. Uh, but the military numbers are still very heavily in favor of the French team. Yeah, but in the meanwhile, the champions are mostly gone from the south. And if you take a look at those traps, they're kind of exposed. And on the south, there is a bunch of champions garrisoned for ACCM. If he unpops them at the right time... There we go. He can just go and take down all those traps, and suddenly there is nothing that Barney can do to push. And on the uh, north... Yeah, there's just the, the one keep there to really help out. On the oh, north, there is enough... a good fight for yellow. Yeah, that's still pretty good. Traps going back home, running for their lives. What a game this is. Yeah, this is uh this was surprisingly a very good game. And uh, do you remember the previous game where the Frenchies yeah. just got stomped and now this one is just pretty solid? Oh, but look at this the like have trying to go in for a big surround, but the Genbo numbers are steadily rising. They're up to fourteen of them right now, and they are just annihilating these Mongol like have that don't have the plus four defense or Hussar in just yet. And yeah, uh, but there's onagers coming in here for Clement, and he just needs like one good shot because replenishing the Jembos is very hard right now. Oh, that was actually a really weak hit. Um, and there's only the one onager, so if Kondos can snipe that, that could be a big issue. The Frenchies are pushing though. Yeah, but in the meanwhile, they still lack any kind of good trading income. Like, it's not 100% efficiency trade either because it's not going from corner to corner just like the Vietnamese one does. And uh, they also have pretty low trade card numbers. So if you take a look at the pop, that's actually better for Vietnam right now. Uh, yes. Uh, the problem is there aren't any gold units dying, at least not many of them. Like, yeah, all the lake have in the world can die. Like, the fact that you don't have trade doesn't matter. You'll just replenish them. Yeah, but uh, now that the light cap are gone, Mangrise will slowly perish, and in the south... Oh, look, look at that fight. I mean, it's tough to call. Atlatlus Skirms should be able to clap those Japanese Skirms, but in terms of, like, combat capabilities, the only difference is the range, which doesn't really matter in a big fight like this. Well, they're fighting uphill, too. Uh, the sea trams are also helping out, another tower is being established. Yeah, a few uh, cannon galleons would be very, very helpful right now from Bad Boy, but he's probably too focused not dying and not losing the trade. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's more important at this point. And again, like, how many Mangudai has Clement actually lost in a long time? I don't know, but not a lot, not because many. I don't see him replenishing Mangudai. Like, he can't. He doesn't really have the good, uh, good enough gold income. But he doesn't have to if you, you don't lose any. Just, like, an occasional snipe here and there but it's been way more costly for Bad Boy, who's just getting slowly wrecked by this uh, Mongol death ball. Yeah, indeed, and uh, on the south, I don't see ACCM pushing through either. Like... No, I think the Frenchies have this. Yeah, the Frenchies are very, very close to having this one. Some more elite skirms coming in here. I think what ACCM could help out with is maybe a few pikemen on the north. Because with uh, Elite Skirm and Pike, I could see this one still being pushed back. But the markets are going down. Yeah, Bad Boy is trying to establish a castle. Markets now even deleted it at this point, having to be rebuilt a little ways further north. But the castles are going to go down, and there just isn't the army needed. Uh, but Clement's population is actually dropping a fair bit. He seems to be kind of running out of steam. Yeah, like, remember that it's one thing that... Uh, Vietnam is going to have a slightly more inefficient trade, but that's basically even to what the French have right now. French still don't have the right-hand side corner, and uh, the French also don't have great trade card numbers, if you just take a look at that. That's like probably sub-20 trade cards. It's five gold, five on gold for Clement and 17 for Barney's, so not good. Meanwhile, yeah. ACCM still has 24 and 55 for Bad Boy. Yeah, and also ACCM has four relics with Aztecs, which also matters quite a bit. Um, and what happened to Barney's? He doesn't have an army right now. ACCM is a pretty big advantage. Those Trebles are looking mighty exposed. Yeah, they are. But look at the 
just the death and destruction that they are unleashing. Oh Eagles coming in here on the north from ACCM. That could actually be an idea. Um, yeah, could work. Fully upgraded elite eagle warriors with Aztecs. Uh, gonna be especially important in killing the siege rams, but once the siege rams die, uh, the genbos and skirmishers kill everything else. So I, I can see that uh, idea. By the way, why does Clement not have Hussar with Mongols still? Because he doesn't have any gold. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he's got a bunch of wood and food to sell, and when you have this many light cav, the Hussar upgrade is pretty essential, I would say. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I can see, like, the justification for not going for it, but, I mean, I would personally probably prioritize it a bit more. Anyway, big fight here. Like, have trying to do the best they can to surround, and the Genbo numbers are not amazing. There's only 14 of them, but the Eagle numbers from ACCM in the north coming for the big old flank doodle. And yeah. Snipe crabs, and yeah, that looks like it's definitely enough. But on the other side, now we have Barney's pushing right back because ACCM having to commit soldiers to the north it means he doesn't have them in the south. Yeah, indeed, but this might actually give him some breathing room. There is a nice onager hit over there from uh, Clement. Still no cannon galleons on either side. By the way, do you think that Bad Boy should delete the fire ships in the middle pond? He's got like 10 population being floated on those fire ships. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, population space is kind of an issue for him since he has uh, so many trade carts. Uh, but he's trying to reestablish a castle. Going to be reestablishing some markets over here. Um, and the Trevor numbers have been whittled down over time. They're down to seven, so their their numbers have been cut in half essentially. Uh, yeah, but, but seven still is still a lot. Production. Seven's still a lot, and they're just killing all the production buildings. Yeah, but I feel like uh, ACCM should probably add a little bit more arb lasts. Like, there is nothing that the Barnis can do against um, like larger amounts of arbs. I think he should switch, switch into Jaguars. <laughs> um, jaguars are going to be fine against the Skirmishers, and they're going to absolutely slaughter the champions. And indeed, he is mixing in some Jaguar Warriors. Um, I mean, he has the castles to do it. He has three castles, at least. Um, four, even. So yeah, that's fine. But it, okay, it looks like the Vietnamese guys have been able to hold on just enough at this point. Yeah, I think so. Because there is still not enough gold income. Although there is 12 on gold for Clement, but that's not enough. 29 for Barney. So he's actually done a decent job getting the gold income. And, um, well, champions don't really cost a lot of gold, especially with supplies. So you don't need a huge amount of gold. You might even be able to sling a tiny bit to Bad Boy. But now... The north again is exposed, and there is just basically pure light cav right now from Clement. Yeah, there's only... Well, nope, it's actually not the case, because the castle has a ton of Mangadai in it. Ah, indeed. In that case, this could still be fine. But, I mean, now they are going to be pushed, and remember that these are the free castles that Clement has to... use to produce Mangadai. If he loses them, there is no more Mangadai. Uh, yeah, and the Catch Bruto Treb's still doing a ton of work, and the Relics are right here too, for what that's worth, which is a fair amount, and they're gonna go bye-bye. Uh, I think the Frenchies have this now. They're pushing back on the north. It's, like, Vietnam has a way better gold income, but they're just unable to capitalize on it, because they're getting pushed back on the south. I don't understand why ACM is going for full Atlatlas skirms. Champs will just clean that one up. Yeah, I mean, he had the time to get into Jaguars and didn't, um, but in a pinch, champions as well. The Cavalier switch coming in, that seems like the least favorite thing to go for against Mangudai. Paladins? Yes. Cavaliers? No. Yeah, indeed. Especially Italian Cavalier. Like, that's missing plus four armor. Nope. Well, I mean, like, he currently is getting it right now, but, I mean, they have it. But Italians have full blacksmith. Hussar in even for bad boy. Yeah, and now, if you take a look at uh, Clement, he's getting his trade card numbers up. 37 trade now for Bonnie. I think the opportunity might have slipped away for the Vietnamese team, because they had the option to win this game before the opponent plays a trade, and I think that the plan here right now for Bad Boy is just to go one big raid, and they could do that. Look at the left side of Barney's base, and overall Clement's base. Their eco isn't really super efficient. If you can get, like, 
what, 20 Hussars in there and kill 20, 30 villagers, this could turn things around because then suddenly the French cannot actually replenish their army. Yep. Also, we have cannon galleons in finally. Gonna be starting to whittle away over there. And I don't think that Varney's can keep this push going much longer. I mean, he's getting all these four production buildings, which is great to see. He's adding in some more trebuchets, but look at the treb numbers. They are very heavily depleted at this point. Yeah, overall, he's adding more and more hobbiteers, which is definitely a sign that he's just running out of gold. And, uh, being honest, ACCM is trading pretty gold efficient. So, having that many Atlantis curves helps remain extremely gold efficient. And on yeah, the north. I mean, he barely has any gold in the bank, but at least his income itself is pretty solid. And in the uh, meanwhile, on the north, there is Galleon coming in as well, and there is also going to be a big push coming from Bad Boy. Now, I think I would have just preferred that cavalry to, you know, move alone and leave the Arblast behind. Uh, they tried to get in, but there was a, a quick gate from Clement that uh, stopped them. Uh, yeah, but in the meanwhile, if you take a look at uh, ACCM's base, he's steadily getting pushed back, and judging by the amount of corpses on the field, I think that those champions are really doing the work against the skirms. Skirms are just not gonna be enough against those Japanese samurai, apparently. Finally! Finally, Elite Jaguar Warriors in for ACCM. Oh, man. Where are they going? And now he's going to be losing another castle. Yeah, and he doesn't really have a lot of castles remaining, to be honest. But in the meanwhile, Barney's is running out of champions. I and mean, the... yeah, like, the, the Elite Jaguar Warriors are just going to chew through absolutely everything. And this is what we were waiting for. The cavalry raid is distracting Clement as they kind of have to react to this one. If they lose the food eco, they just can't replenish the champions. And in the meanwhile, Clement's castles will be pushed by some bombard cannon and trebs. Mangodai will snipe them down, but it's going to cost a few Mangodai lives. And also, it's going to be harder and harder for Clement to repair. And now it seems like ACM might actually be able to counterattack this. Yep, still has some orbs here, but mostly at lateral skirmishers. The infantry numbers are not looking super great for him. Uh, the castle count is, I believe, only at two at this point. Or, no, three, my bad. But a couple of them are kind of far away. I love adding just a couple monks here in the north. You can just keep healing these uh, injured uh, archer units. Always nice to see. And yeah, apparently ACCM is going to start adding siege rams on the north. In this one, on the south, ACM is still holding the four relics around garrisoned, which is a bit of an issue, I would say, for ACCM. Um, yeah, but the swordsmen are continuing forward, and just the overall military seems to be much better for red. Uh, but I did see Siege Onager come in for yellow. That could be uh, something that's huge and saves the day in a pinch. Yeah, and in the meanwhile, on Nord, that is actually a big win for Clement. Gets a surround on the Light Cav. Yeah, now Hussar's even. Finally see Hussar from yellow. Uh, yeah, indeed. Quite a lot of those Mangadai are weak, but they have lost considerable amount of numbers. Oh, but that's a nice surround from blue. And you can't lose all those Mangadai. No, 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 not at all. Wow, what a game. <laughs> yeah. As I said, if this was Arabia, I would have just said Vietnam 3-0 because their players are just way better. But it's Pond Arena and everything can happen on Pond Arena. It's, it's a crazy enough map to justify some crazy games. <laughs> siege Hunter coming in at a Siege Workshop that is uh, not long for this world for ACCM. Um, and now Bad Boy down to 35 military. But now yeah, ACCM finally being able to push back, and if he can use this opportunity to mass some siege, mass some infantry, mass some things that are not skirmishers, um, I think that it's going to be really hard for Barney's to deal with. Yeah, but look at the north. That's a lot of siege rams, although the light cav is gone, so the Jembos could just snipe down the Mangadai, and that would make life pretty hard over there for Clement. So it feels like Clement's pushes also stole out a tiny bit once the light cav meat shield just goes away. 
Yep, uh, trap numbers, by the way, for Barney's are back in action with seven, eight, nine, ten trebuchets. Oh, this is crazy. And another um, castle could go down here for bad boy. This is going to be pretty close. He cannot afford uh, to lose the castles. He needs them for jumbos. And yep. he's gonna save it. Okay, bold mm. prediction. Um, could you see a bunch of galleons, like, as bad boy is dropping more and more galleons here? Just try to land. Land a few barracks, get some condos into the eco, because that would be very, very hard to clean up, and it would be a great distraction. Uh, while the, all those towers were still up from Barney's, then I think that would have been an impossibility, but with all these elite cannon galleons that have just been steadily bombarding the shoreline, yeah, that's a possibility. Um, but that's a lot of trebuchets from, uh, Barney's. If That's only you would have a few Jaguar Warriors to go in and kill them, right? Onagers as well from ACCM. I just make, like, if there's like 20 Jaguar Warriors with some skirmisher backup, that just kills the, all this. Onagers coming in here, getting some shots on top of those traps, but... Why full skirms? I don't understand this from ACCM. Yeah, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. And he had the time to add a lot more uh, trade, so it's not like he doesn't really have the gold because he didn't have the trade. Look at that slaughter that the champions are doing. Yeah, of course they are. They're skirmishers. They're not designed to counter champions. And, and the Trebs are now pushing forward again. And look at the north as well. That's more and more SOs coming in here, increasing Mangadai numbers. Oh, man. Uh, Some eagles coming in here to the south. Everything but Jaguar Warriors, basically. Everything except the thing he needs. And by the way, like, he needs... Like, there's, there's, like, barely any Jaguar Warriors, and they always do so well, because obviously, like, that's what they're designed to do, and the swordsmen helping out as well. Finally, it seems like the numbers are starting to flood in. This is what I've been waiting for! Yeah, and this is the moment where Bornes could actually get pushed back, but... This comes at a price, because at the north, Bad Boy is losing quite a lot of ground. Oh, nice cavalry detachment. This is going to be great for Bad Boy, though. If he can get some cavalry into the, like, Vurik of Barnes, which is by far not efficient, then suddenly things could get pretty rough. So, if France starts losing Voyagers, then they will not be able to keep up with the production that they need. And they are in the trade. Yeah, they're, they're in the trade. Helping uh, the Galleon support, definitely helping out in this regard, giving sort of a, a lane, I guess, in, you could say, in which the, the cavalry can make an attack. And this is just going to be doing so much damage. And now we have ACCM finally pushing back. Like, once he actually got the infantry numbers he needed, then he was able to make something happen. Of course, the swordsmen uh, are just going to chew through these buildings. And yeah. I, I don't know what... Barneys can do to stop this, not without like a ton of arbalests, which I guess he actually has the resources for right now. Yeah, the thing is that uh, in the meanwhile, you could see that uh, Barney and Clement never went for the further, like the furthest away market possibility. They just stuck with what they had and they didn't rebuild into the like southmost corner for some extra distance. Whereas for the Vietnamese team, they actually rebuild the markets on the north, so their trade is also a little bit more efficient. Yeah, that's that's nice to see. Um, so I think at this point it's just Bad Boy needs to hold, and if he can hold, I think ACCM should push eventually. Yeah, I um, and the, totally the trade agree. raid. Although honestly, ACCM lost quite a lot of army pushing forward over there, but there is more CGMs coming in here, and uh, oh, that's some nice onager hits on top. Oh, but here comes a big cavalry play. Cavalier. Genbos, but those are some huge SO hits. Some good old Italian cav archers, too. Oh, yeah. man. That was so big for Clement. They need some more cavalry into the trade because they still can't win this. Not yet, no. Cannon Galleons are working at some siege workshops. Now we have SOs here from Clement finally being able to bring some troops to the south, which he hasn't been able to do for a very long time. Oh, there's a traffic jam here. Oh, 14 traps again for Barneys, and they still have the score lead by 6,000. Champions just walking to the north, just by the ships. Oh, 
Oh, that's going to be a big hit on top of those champs. And on the north, honestly, the Frenchies are very close to hitting the trade again. Uh, I think it's actually over now, because this isn't getting stopped. And the trade's right here, so it actually looks pretty over. Yeah, already rebuilding markets, but uh, I, I don't think you can do that now. Clement being able to push back with the help of all of those trebuchets and onagers. Yeah, Bad Boy is at 130 population now, 60 in military, he's just gone. One final effort from ACCM to run in with, in with a bunch of champions onto the trade. Oh like, yeah, here they are, but... Eh, have a mutual death. Pop. Look at that on the south, 14 traps and there is 4 more coming to reinforce. What is that army? And that trap army is just gonna be gone in a second. Uh, having, yeah, you gotta be careful. Having Kataproto helps quite a bit at packing them up and running away, by the way. And honestly, yeah. the Frenchies are losing quite a lot of trade here as well. And Vietnam can still, you know, set it back to the original trade places. I mean, yeah, this, the, this Mongol dead blob holding. is... He's just, he's just dying. Yeah, this Mongol dead blob is crazy. He's just trying to survive somehow. Yeah, and it looks like the swordsmen are all getting cleaned up. But the trade is also still getting cleaned up. Barney's is dropping a lot in pop. Yeah, he's also losing all of his gold income. 25. It's only 15 on gold now for Clement. CCM now has some siege on and they're gonna get some amazing hits oh, on the yeah. man, you die. And another decent one. Too. And, as I said, Frenchies just lost their trade income, or at least the majority of it. So they can't really afford to lose all those Mangudai that are already pretty weak. And if you just take a look at the eco, it's 11 on gold for Clement. And uh, for Barney's, that's only 18. Um, There's one SO left, and now the Cavalier are coming in, and this means it could be a potential opportunity for Bad Boy to start to push back and re-establish their... Uh more efficient trade. Oh man, by the way, um, I will probably have to leave in a few minutes um, to cast Empire Wars Duo. Oh, Ripperino, man. Like, luckily, Kaswa is also in a game and he hasn't finished just yet. So... Well, yeah. I'm sticking... I'm at least sticking here till the end of the game. <laughs> That's still 16 traps down south. For ACCM, ACCM could get a big onager shot here down south. Oh, he totally could, or he totally could not. Those are the two options. Oh yeah, that onager is just being blocked by his friendlies. And honestly, that onager could do a lot of damage. Trebs just unleashing death. <laughs> they all missed the siege onager. Yeah, but that was a nice onager shot over there from Clement and a few more coming oh. in. Uh, SO's in large part train, but those should be some great hits onto the champions, and indeed they are. Uh, on the north, there is going to be Clement pushing. Um... By the way, there is some light calves inside the trade of the Vietnamese stream from uh, Clement as well. But if you take a look at the populations, Clement and Barney's versus Bad Boy and ACM, population is still better for the Frenchies. Uh, indeed it is. Some Cavalier coming in, trying to snipe some Siege Onagers, will likely get some of them. But it just doesn't seem like the military numbers are enough. 92 military for Clement right now, versus only 50 for Bad Boy. That just seems like a, a really tough hill to climb back from. Yeah, this is really tough to come back from, and Barney has time to reboom and add more trades, just like Clement. So, Vietnam needs to kind of push again and win this game right now, because otherwise their opponent is just gonna outboom them again. It seems like in this map gen you start on a hill, like a very, very small hill, but that actually makes it really hard to push. Uh, some oh. okay onager hits, there could be some more! Oh, don't, don't do this to my blood pressure, man. Uh, the last SO is actually going to get sniped, so then the ARBs and skirms can come in. Oh, 
Oh, all those tributaries are right next to the shoreline. I feel like that's so so risky. Yeah, indeed. Traps could just get destroyed by the galleons or the cannon galleons. Or by random demo, but I think that the French now have this. Look at that dead blob. Bad boy has 26 yeah. army and now I think this is enough for Clement to just run into the trade and finish this one off as it is. As it appears that Barnes is sending a bunch of voyagers. There is a gold mine over here by the lake that is just yeah. being denied by the galleons. It, it's been completely denied all game. ACCM, what? He has 10 Arbalusts in a transport ship. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think he was trying to get into the trade, as apparently the, all the traps switched to the north, they just want to push the trade now, and the French is also expand uh, uh, yeah, the good, trade to the south. Yeah, good, good stuff from them, but right now ACC I'm trying to push, but the population for bad boy just, it doesn't seem to be something that you can recover from, and more and more Hussars coming in, really great job from Clement, just such high military numbers. Uh, and I think once the trebuchets come in here, I'm not sure if it's just going to be something that uh, the Vietnamese team can deal with. No, no, they definitely cannot. Now they don't have any gold income because their trade is the one that's getting slaughtered. And uh, just look at Bad yeah, Boy's base. Over. Bad Boy is down to 44 voyagers and 70 pop. There is no coming back from this deficit. Nah. Oh, wow. Devi raiding me. Perfect timing on that one. This has been one heck of a game. By the way, ACCM unpopped those orbs from the transport ship and now they are sniping down trade from Barnes oh, and no. Clement. But this is way too late, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, Bad Boy's down to 54 pop. Like, ACCM's pop is still okay, but you alone cannot win. There's a ton of eagles coming in for their last hurrah. But no, the, the Mangudai are, are too strong at this point. Yeah, indeed, 58 pop, and just look at that trade, it's just horribly inefficient. And if there was a few traps on the south, Barnes could just take down the castles here, because ACM is nothing at home right now. Champions are literally just walking into his eco. <laughs> that is... 14 trebuchets. That, that's more. That's more than that. That's uh, 16, I think. Oh, man. Wow. Where, where do you think it went wrong for... The Vietnamese team. Could they just um, not push enough in early M? I think the push where uh, Clement was able to kill the bunch of bombard cannons. Oh yeah, that was definitely I think the the turn of the tide. Uh, Bad Boy lost I think six bombard cannons for free. Yeah, something like that. And basically wasn't able to destroy those castles despite having a massive firepower advantage. Like he had even trap numbers, but was supported by like what six, seven bombard cannons. There we go. Oh my goodness. This one is actually going to be an insanely good game to remember, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Like, this was just sick. And, and did yep. it look like it's going to be a sick game, honestly, until... Oh yeah, it looked really one-sided in the beginning. Yeah, I thought that Clement is just going to lose the castles and he's going to get pushed back and GG, but... Honestly, this is why I said that these players, despite the fact that there should be a massive skill difference, and the Frenchies pulled this one off, and, uh, well, Bad Boy didn't really have a great game in this one. 770 kills to 1,400 losses. Yeah, that's pretty feels bad, man. Um, Clement, obviously, Mongols are always going to have an amazing KD, um, but I think the 101 largest army is actually one of the big things that kind of sealed the deal. Yeah, I think what mattered is that look at Bad Boy's gold income. He had 63,000 gold and he wasn't able to capitalize on it. He actually had almost as much gold as the other two players from the opponent combined. And he was just unable to use it and he just got basically defeated by non-gold units. Yeah, it just never got the military numbers up that he needed. Oh, but look at that timeline. Just the back and forth in this one. And the yeah. way Clement built up his army is also very nicely seen over there. And he was yeah, able to definitely. keep the Mangadai alive for the majority of the game, which was pretty important. I don't think he ever lost any Mangadai fights in which he lost like a lot of Mangadai. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that ever happened. And that just allowed him to conserve his gold.